डाइपोल डाइपोल इंट्रैक्शन इन नॉन यूनिफॉर्म इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री केसेस हेयर वन इज वैन वन ऑफ द डाइपोल्स इज एक्जियली लोकेटेड टू अनादर डाइपोल सेकेंड वैन वन ऑफ दैम इज परपेंडिकुलर टू द अदर वन एंड थर्ड इज वैन बोथ आर पैरल टू इच अदर सो ऑल थ्री केसेज वील डिस्कस एंड दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू यूज दिस इक्वेशन टू फाइंड द फोर्स ऑन द डाइपोल so this is another form of del of p dot e which you must have studied before then that is the standard equation where p dot e is the minus p dot e is energy and you do minus del of u to find the force so that equation can be manipulated into this equation as well for electrostatic forces how that happens we are not going to discuss but this equation is as valid as our equation del of p dot e so force we are going to calculate in all three cases using this equation only so here del operator first we know in cartesian coordinates is this and in polar coordinates it is this so needless to say this one is simpler so as frequently as possible we will try to use this but if we cannot solve it with this we are going to use this one so let's take the simplest case where one dipole is on the axis of another dipole and the distance between them is x we need to find the force on p2 so p2 we can write as p2i cap and e due to first is 2k p1 by x cube i cap now we are going to use our first equation of the cartesian coordinates as e does not change direction along p2 so if you move along the p2 the direction of e remains same all through the way it's towards i cap so we can safely travel on this distance using this del operator so if it was aligned any other way we could not have used this equation but here the electric field and the dipole both are aligned in the same way and electric field also does not change its direction on that path so we are going to use the first equation that's why we wrote it in the form of both we wrote it in the form of i cap so from here p dot del so p2 i cap dot of this so only this will remain so this will be left with p2 dot by dot x now we will operate this on electric field so we'll take electric field inside so here 2k p1 and i cap all four are constants so we'll take them out inside will be left with 1 by x cube and do by do x of x cube we know is minus 3 by x power 4 which will give our answer so negative sign on i cap which means force will be attractive so i cap here we could take constant because in cartesian coordinates i cap is a constant now later we'll see that if there is an r cap or theta cap inside and we are differentiating with respect to theta then we cannot take the unit vector out we'll see that so this is the case one simplest where we use the cartesian one in the formula to get our answer now let's say take second case so here one of the dip both the dipoles are perpendicular to each other so we'll take the approach one where we are going to calculate the force on the p2 which is on the equatorial position of p1 so in approach 2 i'm just i'll just show you in a second yeah so in approach 2 we are going to take the second dipole which is on the axial position of one so there are similar situations but our approach is going to be different and we'll see how answer will get the same but still you should know both the approaches so in this one again like in the first case you can see that electric field does not change direction as we move along the path of p2 so its value is minus kp1 by x cube j cap so if you are not aware of these results just see the basics of dipole and the electric field generated by it on the equatorial and axial positions so here the direction of dipole uh, direction of field is downwards and everywhere it's downwards all along the p2 
and P2 we can write as P2 I cap. So again we can use our first equation as electric field does not change direction along P2. So P dot del. P2 I cap dot del again we are left with P2 dot by dot x. Now this we will operate on electric field. So again this. So minus k P1 j is constant. It will come out. Inside will be left with dot by dot x of 1 by x cube. And that will be again be minus 3 divided by x power 4 minus and minus will get become plus and answer will be 3 k p1 p2 by x power 4 j cap which means force on this dipole will be upwards now let's see the second approach where this dipole is on the axial position of p1 so now you can see that along the direction of p2 the direction of electric field also changes which is due to p1 so we cannot use the first equation so we are going to use the second one so we are using second as e changes direction along p2 so p now we are going to write the both p and e in polar forms so p in polar form will be p2 theta cap and electric field due to 1 will be 2k p1 cos theta by r cube r cap plus k p1 sin theta by r cube theta cap so we have to write the whole thing because it changes we are not talking about a point where you can just write electric field as 2 k p by r cube but see here we could do that because it was the direction was same but here we cannot do that so here the direction is different here the direction is also different so you will have some component of r cap and theta cap at this point some other component of r cap and theta cap at this point so we have to write both the components so this is the complete electric field and this is the p2 so the complete electric field at, at a position r now p2 dot del will do so theta cap so this component will be zero so only this component will remain so this will be 1 p2 by r dot by dot theta now this operator will put on this so p2 by r dot by dot theta of this whole thing so from here you can see we can take k p1 by r cube constant and inside will be 2 cos theta r cap plus sin theta theta cap now with respect to theta k p1 and r cube are constants because if you just change theta the r can remain the same you can just travel around in a circle you change everything i mean you change <laughs> you don't change anything else you just change theta and r will not change at all so r is independent of theta so this will take as constant with respect to theta so k p1 by r cube will go out and will be left with dot by dot theta of 2 cos theta r cap plus sin theta theta cap so here these are two terms so we have to differentiate them one by one and here dot we are going to use these two also so these are again standard results for polar coordinates d theta cap by d theta is minus r cap and d r cap by d theta is theta cap so we are going to use them here so 2k p1 by r cube we will take out and inside we will do one by one so this will be 2 minus sin theta into r cap plus 2 cos theta into dot r cap by dot theta which will be theta cap plus cos theta into theta cap plus sin theta into dot theta by dot theta which will be minus r cap so you'll see if you add similar terms together you'll be left with 3 k p1 uh, k p1 p, p2 by r4 3 cos theta theta cap minus 3 sin theta r cap by yeah now that we have got the force this is a general equation till now we have not bothered about the theta at all so e was a general case till now p2 the orientation of p2 we defined but e we took as general so now we can put the values of theta here so theta in this case is 0 because p and r are parallel 
so cos theta will become 1 and sin theta will become 0 and our answer will be 3k p1 p2 by r4 theta cap so once again i'll quickly tell the approach so we are doing it with polar because here as you move along the direction of p2 the direction of electric field changes so we wrote both of them in their polar forms and first we did p dot del which gave us p2 by r dot by dot theta and then we put the general equation of electric field inside and we got our general result here then we put the values of put the value of theta and got our answer now third case we are not going to do all this equation we are directly be arriving at this equation so i'll just show you once and then go back again so here see we have both the dipoles parallel to each other so you don't get confused i have kept theta like this in the counter clockwise sense so here p and r are making angle theta and this dipole is at a distance r so here this is r cap and this is theta cap so i kept it like this so I, we can use the same equation for electric field here which we used here even if you don't align them like i have done you will still get the same answer but this equation you will have to rewrite it then then our th this theta will be different than this theta so in order to keep the equation same so that we don't have to do the calculations again we reach this directly i have aligned the dipoles like this so anyway whatever the force we calculate on p2 here will be the same on p1 here and vice versa and everything so it does not matter so it's the same expression as previous one except sin of p2 as minus p2 theta cap see here this is the r and this is theta so p2 is aligned along with the theta so p2 is p2 theta cap so everywhere we are writing it as p2 theta cap so here also so it will become theta cap is gone but still it will is p2 here then p2 here then p2 here then p2 here so up to here we just have p2 traveling all the way so in this equation uh, we have minus p2 theta cap so instead of p2 minus p2 will travel all the way up to here and this equation instead of this we'll just have a minus sign here so our equation will be k p1 minus p2 by r4 and 3 cos theta theta cap minus 3 sin theta r cap now in this case theta cap sorry theta is 90 degree so if you put theta as 90 degree this term will become 0 and this term will become 1 so minus and minus will become plus and our answer will be 3 k p1 p2 by r4 r cap now be careful here we are taking r cap in this direction towards left so this force is repulsive this p2 is being pushed away from r therefore p2 will be repelled repelled left so these are the general cases for dipole dipole interactions in non uniform electric field later i'll just give you a hint suppose one dipole is at an random angle at some position so then what you need to do is if you just remember these three results well of the axial dipoles of perpendicular dipoles and of parallel dipoles then even if one dipole is at any general angle then you can just break this dipole into components of perpendicular and parallel and you can break other dipole also in perpendicular and parallel components so then you will have two dipoles here and two dipoles here and if you have four, and and you will have four forces between them but all those four forces will be of the these three forms so you can easily calculate what will be the force on that general dipole it's uh, i'll probably make a video sometime on that but for now just know that this is the formula with which we can solve all of our problems now if you take of course the other formula that is del of p dot e then p dot e if you see here will become zero so you won't be able to solve it but with this one we can solve all these kind of questions 
All right.